Yep, awesome. Okay. Welcome everybody to the Monday Night Call and I am so honoured and excited to introduce our guest speaker tonight and if you haven't seen her, you guys are in for a really big treat. I heard her speak quite a few months ago and I was very early in um, on starting this business and I got off the call and Joel can can back me up on this. I went, I'm going out to get some more tattoos because I just want to be exactly like this girl. <laughs> so anyway, let's get this call rocking and have your pens and paper ready because here she is, Mrs. Miss Melanie Brandt. Hello. Thank you, Penny. That's lovely. And look, they do get addictive. They're also uh, expensive. <laughs> but um, I'm excited to be joining you all tonight. And I see we've got people tuning in from all over the place. And if anyone has any, any excuses, like if your team is saying, oh, my God, I couldn't get on because, you know, I've got kids and, you know, dinner and just be like, yeah, we've got people from Canada at 3.30 a.m. for them tuning into this call. So we're rolling with the no excuses straight off the bat. So I'm going to share tonight with you what I know about becoming an online influencer. For me, my journey, as a lot of you know, started uh, about four years ago, <clears throat> four years in a week, I think it is. Uh, and I had no idea, no idea that it would blow out like this. I had no idea it would become this big. Uh, but I entered a world of, of becoming an influ influencer online via Juice Plus. Um, was the vehicle that uh, that I was involved in, but it grew and grew and grew from there. Uh, I was uh, able to brand myself quite early on in the piece uh, because I understood how important this is. Now, please do not run out and think of a name off the top of the top of the mark and just slap it on there and be like, right, this is what I'm going to roll with. Branding must be. Uh, very much about the tribe that you want to attract, very much about your flow and all the things that you can bring to the table. Um, so I was uh, very much in uh, the understanding of what needed to happen in that area very early on and I will share a little bit about that tonight. Um, so I was able to become an online influencer in many, many countries for many different reasons. Some of it, like I said, was um, was a product and a, and a business. Some of it was uh, giving people hope, yeah, that uh, there is options after, you know, maybe you've been through some trauma. There is options, you know, when it comes to changing your life around. Um, some of you have heard my story. I'm not going to share it again tonight. Uh, but any of you that do want to hear it or haven't heard it, just go and uh, have a look on YouTube under Melanie Brand NMD and it should come up. Um, so I'm just going to throw this at you. I am going to literally fire on all cylinders. I think I say that on every call because I want you to take the most out of this. Now, you're going to have some questions um, and look, you're more than welcome. Let's start a, um, for anyone that's coming in from Mesh, let's start a, a thread on Mesh after this call where you can ask some questions and I'll personally jump in there and answer them to the best of my ability. So please make the most of that. Um, if you're not and you know someone from Mesh, ask them and we'll pass back the information. <laughs> uh, that's probably the easiest way to get it to you. So you've heard me say it before and it's consistency is number one, right? You're going to go, oh, damn, I thought she was going to give me all this stuff I haven't heard before. Some of it, yes. Some of it, no. Okay, consistency is number one. I haven't missed a day on social media for four and a half or four years and one week. Okay, whether that was my daughter's birthday, whether it was my birthday, it doesn't matter. I've showed up and showcased my life over the last four years, plus many years prior to that. So that is very, very important. I've always told a story, okay? I've always showed what life used to look like and very much took um, my followers on the journey of my business unfolding and what that looks like. Uh, so that is really, really important is to make sure you're telling a story. If you're just banging on about a product all the time, yeah, and you're not actually taking people on a journey of what it's done, how it's done it, why it's done it, yeah, people will just be like, you're selling me something. Okay, so very, very important that you're taking people on and telling, taking them on a journey and telling a story. You must 
showcase fun. You must showcase fun, okay? If you go, oh, look, I'm not really having fun at the moment. Like, I, I don't want to say the words, put your business down, but you need to do some soul searching. Yeah, you like, you need to find what that looks like because no one is going to join the itty bitty shitty committee. No one is going to be interested in it whatsoever. You have to showcase something that people don't have. Otherwise, what's the point? Why, why are they coming with you? Okay. So very, very important. And especially when you're speaking to people, no matter what's going on in your life, you need to always put a positive spin on things. And this will actually help you as you're growing. Yeah. Another level, another devil. As you're growing, it will help you look at situations a lot different. If when people see you, you're, oh, yeah, look, things are great, but, oh, you know, this is happening and that's happening, and right? You're sucking the life out of them. You need to always be high vibe. And, yes, there's times where I'm not, okay, but they're the times that I'm taking five minutes off social media. They're the times that I'm filling up my cup. They're the times that I'm doing all the self-care, okay? It is absolutely normal that there are times that you won't want to show up on social media. They're the times I say dig deeper than you ever have before, okay? Because every time you don't want to be there, there's something that's coming up for you that you need to grow through. It might be some doubt. It might be some I'm not sure. It might be some procrastinating, whatever it is. Have a look a little bit deeper into why you're not wanting to show up. Maybe you're feeling uninspired. Have a look at the circle of people that you're putting yourself around. When was the last time you did personal development? When was the last time you paid money? Yeah, to be taught by somebody who knows better than you. Now, I'm going to hit you with this straight. This has got nothing to do with being an online influencer apart from if this is the avenue that you want to move in, you will not get there unless you're willing to invest money. Okay, so anyone who is in uh, the, the Mesh crew, we've got conference this weekend, uh, which is so incredibly exciting, right? The hair, the dress, the shoes, we're getting all the important things sorted. Uh, but you know what? I've heard a lot of people say, I can't afford to go or there's something's come up. And I can just say, you're only putting a stop to your own growth. Okay, you are only putting a stop to your own growth by not investing. Uh, you don't have to invest thousands at a time. But if you want a paycheck that pays you thousands, you must first get your brain and your mindset to a level that will allow you to run a business that pulls in that type of money. Now, I could hand my business to uh, someone who is two weeks fresh in, okay, and go, you know what? I feel really nice today and I'm going to give you an NMD business and I can guarantee you they'll squander it down yeah, not because they're horrible people and they don't want to talk to people. It's because they do not have the knowledge just yet to be able to handle the growth, to be able to handle the challenges. Yeah, so very, very important that you're investing, okay? And then this comes into the online business side. I have learned what I know now because I have invested thousands and thousands of dollars. I'm one of those pick it up and I can't put it down until I work it out kind of people. So I've constantly set myself challenges. I didn't understand Facebook. I now know it inside and out. I didn't understand Instagram, but I did not try to build two at once. I built my Facebook business over the last three and a half years and probably in the last six or eight months have I moved into Instagram and I'm very much not pushing uh, the business or product side on Instagram right now. I have other things uh, that are going on uh, in that sense. I'm building my Instagram around another vision, right, around uh, my branding as such. So very important you're clear on why you're using those platforms. I use Facebook because it was designed to have a conversation with someone. It was designed to keep you connected. Instagram was designed to take you on a journey via pictures, Okay, you can't mesh the two. I've found personally, unless you've created a, um, a relationship with someone on Instagram, you can send them as many DMs as you like and you're not going to get a reply. Okay, so things like community care. Okay, some of you might have heard me talk about this. 
Community care is five minutes spending, liking, loving, commenting, just seeing what's going on. Instead of being so damn worried about your social media and what it looks like and what you're going to post and how you're going to say it in your video and your life, just worry about other people a little bit more. Find out what's going on in their life. Listen, yeah, and you'll start to find that everything's already there. Too often we get caught up and we sit there worrying about the perfect live and the perfect video and the post that we've rewritten five times and then deleted it anyway. But if you just had to spend half of that time investing in what's going on on your social media, you will have people instantly that you can speak to or instantly that you can connect with. So that's the first thing. This next one is huge. If you can master this, you will be unstoppable. And it's thinking outside the box. It's that easy. Okay, thinking outside the box. How do you even start that process? You need to be following people from all walks of life. You need to be following the people that are building all types of businesses. And you need to genuinely connect with them, whether they're going to join yours or not. Yeah, because I can guarantee you that you're going to learn things from these people that you haven't seen before. You're going to uh, see ways that they're running groups or trainings or maybe their posts and you're going to be inspired to do something similar. I learned a lot of what I know, like I said, by investing, but I also learned a lot of what I know by not being scared to ask questions, not being scared to look silly and saying, hey, I would love to roll out something like this. Can you tell me a little bit more about how it even works? Yeah, you obviously can't dive straight into that stuff because people will go, I, I paid thousands to learn these things, yeah? But when you're genuinely building conversations, relationships with people, you will find that they're very, very um, happy to help you out. Also offering your story. I have had many, many people worldwide who have nothing to do with the company that I'm a part of reaching out and asking me to come and talk to their team. Maybe it's about social media. Maybe it's about business online. Maybe it's about uh, time management, being a mum, having businesses, right? Uh, and that's because I've always taken people, like I said, on those journeys, but there's so many different aspects of that journey, okay? If you're only concentrating on one, you are shooting yourself in the foot. If you're only talking about your product, you're crazy. If you're only talking about your business, you're crazy. What about your life before? What about your kids? What about things you're excited for? What about things you're good at? Yeah, what about all the bad bits? You've got to be able to share every aspect of you in order for people to know you, like you, trust you. And you've heard this before. Once you tick those boxes, wherever their life is going, your business, your product, whatever it is you're offering, may be something that they're interested in because you now have a relationship with these people. If they're not interested, who cares? Stop being so worried about people having to come on this journey with you, right? Yes, in your online influencing world, no matter what you're influencing, you have something at the end, yeah, that you're uh, advertising or being an ambassador for. But when you get out of your head and into your heart, you will start to attract the right people. Okay, so getting out of the way of always thinking, oh, I've got to talk to this person and I, when can I actually switch the conversation over to my business? You're, you've already lost. You've already lost, okay? So you must be very, very genuine when you're talking to people. They're interested to do what you do, great. If they're not, great, okay? So thinking outside the box, what does that even look like? Some of the things that I've done to think outside the box, some of you may have some of these things. Um, I made uh, a pack and there were 30 pack and every single card on it is different and it's designed to shuffle your, shuffle your deck in the morning and pull a card um, and you are des it's designed to help you change your beliefs, okay? It is very much around uh, business and very much around helping you move through some of the challenges that we have of negative self-talk, of you know thinking um, that you might not be on the wrong tr on the right track, thinking that you know you don't know enough, all these types of things. So I created this pack of thirty cards because I knew that there was that many people every single day that woke up woke up with a little bit of doubt or a little bit of shitty self-talk 
or whatever it was. And I knew that if they could pull one of my cards, if they'd met me, they could almost read it in my voice to themselves and pull them out of their own shit and keep moving. Yeah. So this was something that I saw a gap in. It was something that I saw Lauren Slocum do and just went, oh my God, what an epic idea. Too many people get worried about going, oh, I can't do the same thing. It's not the same unless you're printing the same card with the same writing, yeah, signed off by the same person. It's yours. It's your idea to do what you want with it. So get creative. So I made these cards. Um, I made a, a group on Facebook called Queens with Purpose. And that is a group all around women in business. And I share as much as I possibly can in there. I get speakers to come in and talk to people about mindset and business and everything when it comes to uh, working online. And I also do advertise in there other things that I have going on. So I've created these communities all over the place. And I like to think of it as. I've started fires all over the world, okay? And while I'm sleeping, they're still burning. I'm able to add a little bit more fuel onto these fires as I go, which is growing um, people's knowledge, not only for online business, but growing their knowledge of myself and what I can offer as well. So uh, there's one thing, okay? Now, again, don't just rush out and make a group and just hope to God that everyone's going to jump in it. Yeah, you need to be really clear what the group will be about and what you offer. But as your journey uh, goes on, you will work these things out. You will know what excites you. And the one thing that will help you get there is what did you love to do as a child even, sometimes is the best way to think of it, that absolutely lit your soul up. Now, I remember as a child, I was always the happiest if I could do something for someone. Okay, it might have been around swimming in the pool or on the trampoline or whatever, but it was always the opportunity that I got to serve was when I felt the happiest. No wonder I fell into a business like this, right? No wonder I fell into online influencing because you can influence people by the hundreds of thousands. So have a think, what is it that you love to do? Maybe it's, you know, you have a passion to help uh, women through trauma, men through trauma, kids through trauma. Maybe it's, um, you know, you, you have a background in uh, counselling. Or I mean, who knows, right? Who knows what it is? But start digging deeper into some of the things that you can offer. And a lot of the times it will come from your experiences. You are going to be able to speak the most about the things that you've done, okay? So I've done things like made little short videos. So I have recorded myself speaking, okay, and I've had a, a one or two minute idea that I wanted to share. And it might have been two years ago, I started an online business because I was a mum that was sick and tired of someone raising my babies for me. I had no idea it was going to change my life. I had no idea the friendships I was going to make and I had no idea the opportunities it was going to give my family moving forward right? Something so simple. And I've mushed it into a video through something like iMovie. Um, there's Viva Video. There's a new one that I'm absolutely in love with. Get ready for it. I'm going to be seeing these everywhere now. It's called Quick, Q-U-I-K, Quick. Uh, and it is quick. It's literally adding in your, your pictures. It does all this crazy stuff and puts all your pictures over the top of each other. It plays the music. It does it all for you. Um, and then I added the voiceover into that. So how easy is that to do? And then bang, straight up on my Facebook. The other thing um, is really understanding some of the other platforms that you can be sharing on. I thought things like uh, Snapchat, things like LinkedIn. I was like, not really where I want to be. I don't know if you know or not, but there are many, many, many companies at the moment making in the millions a month on platforms like Snapchat, Twitter, things like that. So having a bit of a play with these things and seeing whether it might be something for you. If you're a serial documenter, then something like Snapchat, Insta Stories, Facebook Stories, that is where you need to be. If you find that you take too many photos, and you're trying to wait to put them all on Facebook because you should only post one or two times a day, 
You need to be using a platform as well as Facebook that allows you to document all of these things on a more regular basis. Okay, so get out there. I remember saying to myself, I don't understand Facebook ads. I have no idea. And some of you that are tuning in, you need to be uh, doing your research on this because not all companies uh, and not all countries allow for this to happen. Uh, we are lucky enough in, in this business and in this country that it was something that I was able to utilise to grow my business and still do. Uh, what I did was I set out to learn. So I was on every podcast I could find. I was on every free webinar I could find. I was YouTubing it and I was testing, measuring, testing, measuring. Yes, I wasted thousands of dollars doing it. Okay, and you may too if you, do, if you choose to go and learn these things. But I honestly urge you to start testing yourself a little bit more. Rather than running this story, I don't know. I don't understand it. I hear a lot, some of the, the, uh, the people that come into this business that might not have grown up in the era of social media saying, I'm just not good at social media, I call bullshit. Yeah, it's just something that you need to sit at and you need to try again and again and again and again. There's a, a program uh, that Joel asked me about the other day and it's, I think it's OBS. Uh, and look, I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I sat at my computer and apart from toilet breaks and dinner, I did not move for three days to try and work that program out. YouTube, you name it, and I was, I was back and forth between screens and I wanted to work out how when people go live, they have a banner, right, at the top of their, their little square that has like www.whatever or they've got, you know, um, their logos or whatever. Have you ever seen those things? Put your hand up if you've ever seen those things and gone, what app is that? Right? Well, you're welcome, OBS. I hope you got three days spare. But no, there's probably easier ways to do it. I am blonde. But, uh, you know, there's loads of things that you can go and do. There's loads of ways. I mean, I'm sure that there's apps now that are probably a lot easier than the way that I did it. I haven't used it since. I just needed to know how it worked. Um, but, you know, these are the things. What is making you stand out from the rest? Do your lives sound and look like everyone else's? Do your posts look like everyone else's? Is your vibe the same as everyone else's? Yeah, because people are going to be like, eh, next. Yeah, so when people say, Mel, how did you build your business? I just decided to go a little bit harder than the person next to me. I did my lives a little bit more controversial. Yeah, or I put a little bit more effort into learning how to make them show up in a way that looked a little bit more professional. Yeah, that is what will get people's attention time and time and time again. Things like salad in a jar parties, okay, for some of you who go, oh, social media kind of scares me, which, look, I don't know if you, if you would be on this call right now. Everyone seems to be uh, on here because they want to be learning more about the online influence. But I had so much fun because it actually got it offline. Everyone was so used to me building online that I never actually got to catch up with people. I was the serial uh, canceller on uh, dinners, barbecues, you name it, because I was so focused on growing my business. So when I put together a salad in a jar party, everyone jumped at it because they're like, pin her down while she's actually going to be in one place for one hour. So it was a really cool way to bring everyone that I had met online together and actually meet them face to face, which usually would never happen. So that was really, really awesome. Like I said, research new apps, start getting out there. If you go, oh my God, I really want to really have this certain background, go and search it in the app store and I'm sure it'll pop something up, okay? Um, you need to make sure that your pages have flow. Okay, if you are a serial sharer, everything that your friends share, you share for them. It's a little bit off-putting for one. If you are somebody who puts up about the product five times a week, stop doing it. Okay, once or twice a week is way more than enough. Okay, because the thing is with a business like being online, no matter what you're doing, there should be a lot of conversations in the background. You do not need to flood your page with product and business. 
You do not. People buy into you. They buy into you for the product because they love your results or they they think it might be able to help them or whatever it is, whatever business it is that you're doing. So people want to see you. Isn't it funny how when you put up a picture of your children, all of a sudden you get 32 comments and usually you get zilch? Yeah, because people love the reality side of watching you. We all watched Big Brother. We all watched, you know, all these reality TV shows because we're absolutely obsessed with finding out about everyone else. It's the truth. Okay, so what are you showing? If you're doing this, I'll give you a little bit because I don't want to get too vulnerable, then you're only going to get a little bit back from them. Okay, you have to go all out. I'm not saying you have to go and bear your soul online. Okay, but you have to get vulnerable with people so that they really get to know you. Because like I said, people that have been following me now for over four years, they probably know me better than uh, some of my closest friends, right? Because I have, I've got so vulnerable in my journey, in my story, in the outcomes, in the goods, the bads, uh, which has allowed people and given them permission to do the same thing. Every time you're vulnerable, you give someone permission to do the same thing. I I can't tell you how many messages I've had from women especially after I did my NMD speech in America thanking me for being so incredibly vulnerable and then they shared some of the toughest things that I'm sure they've ever shared in their life to me, right? And I, I felt blessed. Yeah, I felt privilege to have that much trust put into me from someone I'd never even met yet and within a split second felt like I'd known them for 25 years yeah they're the relationships you need to be building don't expect them if you don't go first no one's life is perfect okay we think it is it looks like it But behind the scenes, we've all got the same shit fight happening, right? We've all got the washing pile. We've all got, you know, the kids that haven't been well behaved that day. We've we've all got it. Yeah, turn it into fun. Turn it into, um, you know, put some humour into it because not only is it going to allow you to see things a little bit easier, but it's going to make people go, wow, this shit is this shit's funny. Now, there's a lady I want you to go and check out. I don't believe uh, she has anything to do with the business I'm a part of, but I want you to go and check out the posts that she does. Her, her name is Ashy, A-S-H-Y underscore R-A-U-I-C-A-V-A. If someone can type that in the chat. So A-S-H-Y underscore R A U I C-A-V-A underscore. Now, Ashley, um, I have no idea how I even started following her, but you know what? I just look at her posts and just go, wow, wow. So I'm walking through Westfield the other day and there she is on one of those light up TV signs in the middle of the shopping centre. Yeah, this is how much this woman has been able to turn herself into an online influencer. Um, and she, she bears it all. Literally, you know, a lot of you would have heard of Constance Hall. She's another one who just bears it all. She tells it how it is. She is not scared of the haters. Sometimes that, you know, you'll see her do posts about them, but she uses an inspiring positive edge on people that have bullied the hell out of her in order to bring a positive to the table. Now, who wins in the end? She does. Yeah. So I... Actually, and this is probably going to sound a little bit weird, I get excited about haters. Like I actually get excited to the point where sometimes I think, what can I say next? Yeah, because I don't want to be perfect. I don't want for everyone to be like, oh, my God, it's all fluff and lollipops and rainbows. I want people to go, oh, yeah, right, that made sense. Or, oh, that one hit home. I want to get you thinking about certain things. I want you to have permission to be vulnerable. So when you're just doing all the fluffy stuff, that's all you're going to get back. Okay. So, and apply that to everything, even in your conversations that you're having online. If you say to someone, Hey, how are you? You're going to get a, Hey, how are you back? Yeah. If you get a, you know, if you say to someone, Oh, you know, how's the kids? 
yeah, they're good. It's not exciting, right? You're going to get not exciting back. You've got to dig a little bit deeper. You've got to be the first one. I had a girl message me the other day and she's like, hey, I really love meeting people online. And I'm like, me too. She's like, how's your day? And I said, I just walked out of the gym like a newborn baby giraffe, actually. So not quite sure what the rest of the day is going to look like. Because you know what? That's me. If you know me, I'm always joking around. Yeah, so I must showcase that. And I do it right, right the second I speak to someone pretty much. Yeah, because in that moment, they're going to decide whether they like me and want to continue or not. And I'm trying to attract my tribe and remember your tribe are exactly you. We spend so much time trying to work out our avatar and our tribe and sitting there thinking, oh my God, who are these people? How do I find them? Just go and do all the things that you love. Be you. Yeah, all the things that you keep saying you're going to do, go and do them because you'll meet all the people that you need to be around doing all the things that you love. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, what works might not continue to be what works. Who's put up a post and had like so many comments that you just want to fall off your chair? So then a few months later you've done it again and you get nothing. And you're like, oh, maybe it's the time. It's got to be the time. It's the day. Yeah. It's not. It's just that what works sometimes won't always continue to work. You have to have this bucket of ideas, literally a bucket of ideas of ways you can share content and ways you can deliver your message. And then every time you get a chance, just grab something out of the bucket and see what happens with it. It is test and measure. Um, So, you know, maybe mixing things up a little. Yeah. If you've always done a very similar post that says, hey, message me for some info and it doesn't work a that's because it's salesy don't do it yeah but b try something different if you haven't done a facebook live yet look i I don't want to offend anyone but you've got to do it right it's 2019 now that excuse isn't going to serve you for much longer before facebook lives are old news okay every time you're not doing something because you're putting yourself first, they're thinking of the next brightest idea. And if you can't swallow lives, what the hell are you going to do with the next thing they bring out, which will be 10 times scarier, no doubt. So you've got to try and keep up with the times. You have to continually test yourself. And again, that gives people permission to do the same thing. Think up new campaigns. Who, when I say campaign, who knows what I mean? Pop your hands up. Who knows? Oh, not many people. Okay, so a campaign is basically, right, June is all about kids' health. There you go. Is your content not even just written for you? Because all you did was decide what your campaign is going to look like. July is going to be all about little black dress. So it's going to be all, you know, whatever. And I'm just using, you know, um, what I do as an example, but it's going to be all about you know, eating healthy and getting active and all those types of things. Uh, August, August might be boss babes in business. Yeah, it's going to be all about online influencers, brand ambassadors, you name it. It's not hard to find content when you're following a heap of people, okay, because you can be inspired by what they're doing. Please do not. And I don't even know if we still got to say this, right, because this has been circling for some years now, but don't. Just copy what they did and whack it up and think, they're not going to watch my page anyway. Okay, you must just be inspired by it and then go and make it your own. Okay, Uh, so that would be definitely the, the biggest tip I would say is that you need to be you. If you're, you know, spewing up someone else's content, everyone knows it's not yours. They know it's not your vibe. Some of the words you use won't even be, they won't even sound like you, okay? So my challenge for you, one of them, I'm sure I'm going to come up with a few as we go, will be go and write a list of 10 people. I have them up on my wall uh, that at any given moment you can go and have a squiz at what they're doing and I challenge you to make five of them not in the business that you are in, okay? Don't make them so goddamn huge that they're hard to follow because they've got someone actually handling their social media for them. 
Okay, find someone who's on a very similar journey to you, maybe a similar time frame, or maybe just someone who's got a great vibe. Okay, um, so some of the things that I've seen getting around are things like the mermaid challenge. Some of you may or may not have seen this, but it's a great way to get people interested. If you don't know what it is, ask your upline or ask your upline's upline. Okay, um, asking friends and family to share posts for you. I did a very, very, um, a very uh, direct post a little while ago and it was uh, hey friends and family I'd love to ask a favor of you anyone who's willing to put up a post on their wall for me could you please comment below I had a hundred and eighty people that said yes okay now that is because people will help you more than they'll help themselves okay so then what did I do each person was different Okay, I'm not going to go and put a boss babes post on my nana's friend's wall, right? Yeah, so it's going to take a little bit of time to work through these people, but you decide what you think the best uh, kind of post would be for that particular person to share. Whatever they're like, their friends are going to be like. So if they're personal trainers, most of their friends are going to be in the fitness industry. If they're mums, most of their friends are going to be mums. Yeah, so you'll get a fair idea of the type of content that you should be sharing. Uh, moving on from here, like I said, don't be scared to upset people. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean just go for gold and slag off everyone on social media. Please don't do that. But what I mean, and you're all welcome to go and have a look, uh, if you type into the search bar of your Facebook, uh, Melanie Brandt job offer, it should bring up a, a live that I did and I, I just can't not giggle when I talk about this. Uh, and I actually saw this. I saw uh, an English girl do it. And I only listened to half of it and I thought, right, I get the gist of what she's doing. I'm going to recreate it. And it was all about getting a job offer from a brick and mortar and basically saying, you know, do I get to pick who I work with? And they're like, no, right. Can I bring my kids? No. Okay, cool. Can I tell you what I want to earn? No, you can't do that either. All right, cool. Well, can you pay for my car? No, we can't do that. And it just went on and on and on. And basically at the end, I was like, you know what? This is why I do what I do. This is why online business made sense to me. It doesn't have to make sense to you. But all I know is that I get to design what my days look like, what my check looks like, the people I work with, X, Y, Z. Okay, that's how, um, that's how it uh, I did it was basically to to bring it to people like that. So definitely, I'd seen someone do it before. I had people writing on there, "Ah, oh, you're copying, you're doing this, you're doing that." Right? Did I get caught up? No, because little do those people know the ones that actually took ten minutes out of their day to to post this rubbish uh, actually just networked for me. Okay, so out of everybody, yeah, that posted the ones that threw the most hate were the ones that actually networked for me okay that video alone had i think between five and eight new people join my business in that month okay so don't be scared of the haters okay because i'm pretty sure it was like the haters friends that ended up wanting to do it anyway so if you're always worried about what people think online business isn't for you Okay, because you, you are entering a cruel world. <laughs> okay, this world we're in is cruel, but the online world is, is very, very cruel. You need to be able to overlook that. Okay, we don't care who these people are. We don't care what they got to say. Okay, because some people just have no better time to spend than to slag people off online. Okay, take it with a pinch of salt and keep moving. Okay, um, if you can disconnect from the outcome, when it comes to your online business, no matter the outcome, whether it's good or bad, disconnect, okay? You will continue to re-sign every single month and grow every single month, no matter how long it takes you and how slow or fast or whatever, okay? Because you must be able to see it for what it is, okay? If I got upset about every single person that is now not in my organisation, I have a lot of tears to shed, right? You know, it's their journey. It's their journey. It's not my decision. 
how long they stay, what level they get to, how much they earn. My job is to show them that there's an opportunity to have a, what I feel is a better life, okay? My job is not to get upset if they decide different, okay? Support them, love them, and, and that is your job done. Uh, like I said before, be vulnerable, okay? That is one thing that I can honestly say. If you're not quite sure about how to start that vulnerable process, you don't want to just all of a sudden jump on your Facebook page and pull your heart out, right? You've been a closed book up until now, but you're just going to jump up. People are going to go, wow, nice sob story. That was, that was awesome, okay? You have to build up to it, all right? So if anyone wants any more information about that or anyone's ready to do it, Okay, and, and I, I challenge only the people that are actually ready to do it to shoot me a message and I want to hear your story first in voice messages, okay, and I will help you with a handful of ideas of how to roll that out over time, okay. It is not something that you can just dive into, but you can, uh, I'm going to use the word choreograph, how you're going to roll that out uh, so that it's genuine. Um, alongside the content you've already been sharing. Have rituals. You've all heard this before. But I have rituals for the bad days. I have rituals for the good days. Uh, and I have rituals for the days where I'm sitting in front of YouTube for three hours, three days, because I'm trying to work out a new program or new app or new ad or some new algorithm. Okay, they're all different. Arm yourself with a tool belt. Okay, you must wear a tool belt. Okay, in that tool belt, it's going to have meditations for the days where you can't get your shit together. It's going to have positivity no matter what that looks like for you. Find someone on, <laughs> I'm Batman, oh, my God. Just, my dad says the same thing. I'm like, no, Dad, no, you're not. <laughs> um, so, look, uh, you know, you, you just really put me off then, Brendan, thanks. Um, so you need to have a tool belt of all the things you know are going to pull you through. Okay. So, uh, for me, it was, uh, like motivational links and stuff on YouTube, anything to do with Les Brown. Okay. You give me a dude that's screaming at me that I just need to keep going and I'm like, all right, all right, all right, I'll do it. And that was what got me, that was what got me through the days. It might be different for you. Um, I always needed to have an audio, but it needed to be something with guts. Okay, I've, I've bought some audios and I've got three or four pages into some of them or three or four minutes into some of them and gone, oh, my God, shoot me now. Yeah, like I've got to have something with guts. Okay, so find the genre of audio or books that you like and stick with it. Yeah, when you feel as though you need to have a highlighter next to your book, you've found what you need to be keeping a hold of. Okay, some of the books that uh, have been absolute game changers for me where I created content from the books. Now, this is one of my biggest secrets that I, I'm not sure I have given away before, but most of my content is created from either audio or books. So I'll be listening and I'll hear something in it and say, for example, I was on the treadmill the other day and I heard the word butterfly effect. And I was like, oh, boom, I can totally write something about that. I don't care what the, the definition is on the internet of butterfly effect. I'm going to talk about what I feel the butterfly effect is. Yeah, so don't be so worried about it having to be correct, having to be the exact thing. Yeah, make it your own. I just told them what the butterfly effect is, okay? So these are the things. If you're not constantly growing and learning, you're not actually getting ideas for your content anyway. So one of the books I got the most content from and I still am was Life Lessons from the monk who sold his Ferrari. Game changer. It was, I think, the second book I completed in my life. Again, Facebook post, that was. Did I go, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed because I've never actually finished a book? I was like, no, there's a Facebook post. Boom, finished book two, 32 years old, killing it, right? And everyone's like, oh, my God, you're hilarious because 
they're exactly the same. They're just not telling you, okay? There's all right, there's a handful that probably read way more than that. But there's a big chunk of people that don't make the time. So I had loads of people messaging me from that saying, oh, my God, you inspired me to go and buy a book. I haven't read for 10 years. Like, how cool is that? So life lessons from the monk who sold his Ferrari. There's 101 chapters in it. Every single one of those chapter titles in the contents is an idea for a life. Every single one of them. So if anyone on this call comes up with the excuse, I don't know what to talk about on a live, you're going to be in trouble, right? you just got 101 titles to go and play with, okay? And you read the chapter, but then you can dictate it back to people in your words with what you think. Apply it to your experiences, how you see things have happened, okay? Uh, the next thing is, like I said, make sure you got your tool belt, okay? What is your go-to audio? What's the genre for your books? What is um, your YouTube, okay? Who are you loving on Instagram? What are your go-to meditations? Who are you following on Facebook? That's your tool belt. Yeah, go and fill up all the pockets full of all the stuff. And there's not going to be days that you struggle with content. Uh, the next thing is get to know your sidelines. Now, some of you might be like, oh, what's I got to do with being online? I have had that many of my sideline buddies who are not in my business, sometimes not even in the same business as me, who I've reached out to and said, I love your story. Or I love your vibe. Or I love what it is that you do. Will you go live with me? And they're like, of course I will. You know why? Because the minute that we click go, my network sees that I'm live. Her network sees that we're live and my network sees her. Smart thinking, right? So instead of having my 500 friends see, we've now got a 1,000 people that can see us both. Yeah? And everybody seems to be very cool with the idea. Okay, because uh, you're basically saying, okay, cool. Well, you know what? I don't mind if people that I know like you more or like your story or like what you do or like your product. Yeah, so you're getting rid of that, um, you know, need to always be like, that's mine. That's mine. These are all my people. These, these are going to buy my product off me. Yeah, because they're probably going somewhere else anyway. Yeah, the more you open up your doors and just be like, hey, whatever. If you like what I'm about, come over here. If you don't, whatever. And you find that people are like, I'm coming with you. Okay, so you've got to be able to be welcoming no matter what. The minute you do this, you're lost. Okay. Um, be everywhere. Okay, so you might, like I said, don't, don't go and start every single platform and think that you've got to post on every single platform every single day because that is bonkers right but if you jump on if you put yourself out a little bit yeah and you go and speak on a call yeah with one of your uplines or share your story you can then get the the recording or get the original you can upload it into your own youtube boom you just started your own youtube channel okay you can go and make a video on quick like i just said and you can go and upload that to youtube too yeah, then you can go and make a video that's a little bit longer or maybe you're going to do a training or maybe you're, you're right into meditation and you're going to share a 10-minute meditation and you're going to host it, right? There's a million things that you can do and go and upload it to your YouTube, okay? This is getting you out of your comfort zone for one. It's starting to get people to see you, okay? And it's starting to really get the creative juices flowing yeah for you to be able to really start to get creative with your business and the content that you're sharing okay i've been uh, uh working with a lady for a little while now and uh she said to me only the other day oh my god i am so creative now and it was because constantly sharing well, why don't you try this what about that what about this go have a look at that so surround yourself with people who can just broaden your horizons. Surround yourself with people who have got good ideas. And all you need to do is find someone that's doing what you love and mimic what they're doing. Don't copy, mimic what they're doing. 
So I came into this business, there was some really strong leaders moving very, very fast. Okay, I mimicked what they did. If they did an event, I did an event. If they were doing three-way calls, I did them. If they were posting about the product, so was I. Yeah, if they were posting about their night out on Friday, so was I. If they were out on Friday, so was I. Yeah, if you're doing A, B, missing C, D and E and then whack an F and G in there as well and you're thinking you're going to nail it, no. Okay, you, you cannot become an online influencer, earn a shit ton of money if you're missing a few of the steps. Okay, you must do it all. Did I want to be out every single night? No. Do you have to be out every single night to build your business? No. But 